Hey, I'm Louie. A couple months ago, my mom and I and our two dogs, Lady and William, arrived on an island in Southeast Alaska. We had never been to Alaska, and after traveling almost the entirety of the U.S., we decided that there was no better place to own property. After a bunch of research, we settled on a three-acre plot of land and bought it sight unseen. As you may know, winter is approaching us, and living in vehicles was not going to cut it for the cold season, so we are renting out a cabin, while we wait on building a driveway to access and live on our new property next year. We're so excited to spend our first winter getting to know the people and the land in our new home, and share it all with you. So don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to find out if we make it through our first cold, dark Alaskan winter. Let's go! Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Comment below if you know what YouTuber says that. Today we are headed to Juneau, Alaska. I bought a ticket to go to Juneau to take care of some personal stuff, but it turns out I don't really need to do that. So we're just gonna still go to Juneau and show everybody around. Mom is driving me this morning. <laughs> Since mom got a trip to the state, it's my turn to go explore now. <laughs> so we're just gonna take a plane today to Juneau, Alaska, which is the capital of Alaska, and so happens to be the biggest little city, biggest little city here in Southeast Alaska, and check it out. We're gonna go on some trails, we're gonna stay at a haunted hotel, and uh, yeah, a historic hotel. I don't believe it's really that haunted, but. <laughs> we should see get some food, explore. We'll be there for about 48 hours, so it'll be a good time. The mountains are sunny today. Bye, William. Bye, lady. Bye, mom. I'll Bye. see you later. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Thank you and welcome aboard. I don't know if the bus is gonna come or not, so we will see. So I just missed the bus by like literally 30 seconds. So I'm going to walk 13 minutes to another place where I could catch the bus. Otherwise, I might have to take a taxi. Hotel. Made it to the Alaskan Hotel and bought Alaska Hotel and check out this view. Something I find often when I travel by myself, like before the pandemic, I would do traveling abroad and stuff by myself. People always like question like, why am I traveling on my own? And I'm just like, because I can and I want to, but this hotel is so cool. Like, I hope no haunting stuff happens. If it does, that'll be a cool story, but this is such a beautiful hotel. It smells good. You would think it would smell kind of musty in here, but it smells very clean. Imagine it's 1913. The new Alaskan hotel and bar has just opened. It's the talk of the town. You settle in for a whiskey at the Victorian era bar. You meet up with your gold mining pals to talk about how Alaska has just become a new U.S. territory and what that means. Today, locals know it as a place that you might encounter a ghost, but also for its rich historical background. The hotel is the oldest running hotel in Southeast Alaska that has seen miners, outdoors people, lawmakers, and many adventurous tourists. October 25th, 1978, the hotel was added to the National Register of Historic Places. All right, we're headed out to Manila Square. I'm going to grab some Filipino food and yeah, take you with me. All right, let's go. It's a sunny day or it's like a cold sunny day. So we've got to take advantage of this time now because it's going to rain tomorrow. Look how cool it is in here. So this 
is Manila Square. So I'm not normally a meat, big meat eater, but um, I had to get some adobo, some rice, and some pancit. Filipino food. It's so strange being a mixed race person because Filipino people don't know I'm Filipino. Black people don't really. Some black people think I'm black, some don't. It's a very strange um, existence. They never question it. No one ever thinks I'm Filipino. <laughs> But the food's good. Oh my god. This is amazing. Oh my god. So good. Tastes like my childhood. Y'all, this is an introvert's dream. There are like no people out here. It's off season. There aren't any like touristy stores open or anything. Look at this dead boardwalk. <laughs> the vibe is very much uh, closing down for winter. There's the tram you can take from there all the way down to there. There it goes. <laughs> All right, we're gonna walk from here to the state capitol and then back through here. On this trip, I learned a lot about Juneau and the history of this region, beginning with the native peoples all the way up to the moving of the capital to Juneau. Here's a brief overview of what I learned and is by no means extensive research. There's a lot more to learn about the native peoples of this region and the colonialism that took place. I have left some sources below to learn more. The native people or the first peoples of this region were the two distinct groups of the Clinket and Haida who migrated here about 8,000 to 11,000 years ago. The Clinket and the Haida are made up of many different clans that are spread out over this region. Each clan is made up of eagle and raven houses. The primary means of travel was by these beautiful red cedar handcrafted canoes with different paddles for different tribes. Today, these canoes are still crafted and used in ceremonies. The Clinket and the Haida have subsisted on these beautiful lands for thousands of years and have extensive knowledge on how to care for and respect it. The main lesson I learned from educating myself about the Clinket and the Haida is that we must have a deep respect and love for this land and for each other. In the late 1700s, Russia colonized Alaska to take its resources such as otter pelts and fish. The native peoples fought to keep them away, but the main genocide of the Clinket and Haida was through the spread of germs, cutting the population into about half its original size. Towns were established in lands previously inhabited by the Clinket and Haida. Then, in 1867, the U.S. purchased Alaska from Russia for $7.2 million. The U.S. began to settle on lands that were previously Clinket and Haida lands. The main city area of Juneau, for example, was used as a place to camp in the spring and summer fishing season. The Clinket have no formal rights to this land anymore. Because of the newly found resource of gold and other mineable resources, the population of U.S. citizens began to grow while the indigenous population began to decline. In more present times, activists such as Elizabeth Parotrovich in 1945 lobbied for the enactment of the Anti-Discrimination Act. This has begun the process of fighting for the rights of Native Alaskans and other POCs here in Alaska. Look how much they made, 80 million, between 1892 and 1944. All right, so I had my first strange occurrence happen. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably just um, a light bulb that went bad or like a circuit went bad or something, but I had this light on here. It was turned on like that light. And then it just all of a sudden went off and then my back started tingling. Usually like my back will tingle when I'm feeling some sort of like creepy thing happening. Um, yeah, so this is the first night at the Alaska Hotel and Bar. We're gonna sleep here for two nights. I got a room all to myself. I didn't want it. They have options for shared bathrooms, but um, being a solo female traveler, I figured it would probably be better to splurge and spend like 10 or 20 more dollars a night to have a uh, working bathroom and everything, um, just for safety measures. You never know. But anyways, we're in here. We'll see, it's quite cold in here. They have this really beautiful old radiator 
I love beautiful old radiators. It reminds me of my college dorm rooms, but they also have one of those heaters, so I've turned that on. And I'm hoping it gets warmer in here. I think I'm gonna take a blistering hot shower right now. Um, to counter my fears of anything, I have the great British baking show playing on in the background while I shower. <laughs> so I don't get spooked out. <laughs> I may just be over-dramatizing this. Nothing's gonna happen. Totally nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm not one of those like ghost shows or anything or those paranormal shows. I'm a normal person staying at a normal hotel. All right, y'all. It is about, what time is it? 9.24. I'm starting to creep myself out. <laughs> I'm sitting here right on the bed and I'm like all of a sudden I feel like something like touched my arm I was like what the heck so I'm like okay it's nothing it's nothing so I go to the bathroom <laughs> and on the way to the bathroom I dump my food container out into the trash go to the bathroom and I'm like all creeped out now to like look at reflections and shit <laughs> and and then so I walk past the trash can that I just dumped my food container in and the like plastic wrap of the trash can like moved a little bit and I was like oh, what was that but it's because I put my food container in the trash can yeah anyways I'm definitely like creeped out now it's really just in my head um if anything happens though I will report I did find a website that has um some of the scary happenings see if I can find it. So it has the different scary things that have happened here in this hotel. Def different like deaths and murders and stuff. So I'm going to um, read them aloud as to hope not to conjure or bring any of these spirits near me because I, I don't really want to have an interaction. But th these are the possible haunts of the hotel. They're saying the main reason for this possible haunt is because there's a meridian that is located directly behind the hotel um, which causes entities to get stuck because it's partially blocking some of, some of the energy from getting out of the hotel. That's what that's what this website says. You know. So room 219, um, this lady unfortunately sadly got murdered by her husband because um, he heard rumors about her cheating on him and in a jealous rage he murdered her and shot her on the bed and she had like had her arms outstretched who knows how much of this is true but she had her arms outstretched towards her husband when he came back came back into the room and then he just shot her and she died and so uh now you'll see her walking um uh by and with her arms outstretched and she'll try to hug you basically well not hugly hug you and then walk right through you that's pretty creepy. Um, room 315, which is the floor that I am currently on, um, apparently has some sort of entity in it. Um, no one knows what it is. Um, so I'm glad I'm not in that room. I'm in room 323. And then the second possible haunt is a man unfortunately passed away in a hot tub in the basement of the hotel, um, which I don't think the hot tubs or any of the pools or whatever is in the basement level of this hotel is open anymore but yeah sometimes you'll see him there yeah and apparently some like evil spirits also roam this hotel so that's a bit creepy <laughs> that's enough of that for now <laughs> it's totally fine i'll let you know how it goes um so we're just gonna watch some tv we'll probably sleep with the light on tonight and we'll, we'll be fine be totally fine Oh man, so I made it through the night last night. I was definitely creeped out and there were definitely weird sounds and movements and things, but I mean, like, that's what staying in a place you've never stayed in before is usually like, oh, I did a good, I didn't get to sleep till like really late, so I'm kind of sleepy today. So we're gonna go get some coffee. We need some coffee to wake up. I need coffee. I think this is my new favorite spot. <laughs> Got some coffee. A place called Heritage Coffee. Yeah, time to explore some more. Despite not getting very good sleep last night. All right, I better look at the directions. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, I'll look how steep it 
nervous. It's like San Francisco. Look how cute these streets are. They're like so adorable. <laughs> you know, just a simple hike to my hike. Back at the hotel with my half falling off rain pants that are too big for me. But I got a haul. I see all these YouTubers do like hauls of a thrift store shopping and whatever. Well, I did a, I'm doing a haul of some Asian food. I went to the Asian market to see if they had some of the stuff, uh, spices that I need to make some, um, to make some Filipino food. So I got some <laughs> adobo sauce packets so I can make tons of adobo, different variations. They didn't have pancit flavoring and they didn't have sinigang flavoring. So I'm gonna have to wait on that one. I got some prawn crackers. And then some rice noodles. I don't think these are the right ones to make pancit with. I don't remember. It's something I'm gonna have to call my grandma about because I don't really remember what they look like, but That'll be good nonetheless. Those are, these noodles are super expensive or hard to find on our island. So I'll bring back a little bit as a treat. Now I'm going to take a hot as balls shower and then probably go to a little brewery, get some, try some beer. I forget sometimes that I'm over 21 and that I can do stuff like that. So I'm gonna go do that and get back here before dark because I do not want to be roaming the streets of Juno at night by myself. All right, all right. You guys are gonna be disappointed in me because um, you're probably expecting me to go out and meet people and stuff, but I really am just not feeling it. Um, I think it's okay to go easy on yourself, after, especially after a pandemic, um, where you didn't weren't allowed to go out and stuff. So I instead went to this health food store because they have really awesome, cool stuff, and I got some things, and I'm going to show you what I got. Um, first of all, I got my mom a little hydro flask, a little lavender hydro flask because she has a giant water jug that she carries around and like she's always like I can never drink enough water because it's too big so I bought her a lavender hydro flask um, as a thank you because she's been helping me with a lot of like photo and video stuff recently. I got some strip waffle because if you guys have ever had this before, this stuff is so good. It's especially good in Amsterdam, but yeah, we got some of the, I got some of this because I wanted to remember the Dutch flavors of Stroopwafel. I got a kombucha. This stuff is gold because in, because on the island where we live, um, yeah, they don't, I don't think they sell this flavor. They sell this brand, but there's like three flavors. So this is a novel thing for me. For some of you, you're like, okay, cool, kombucha, but for me, this is novel. I got some figs because you don't normally get figs where we live. So I figured I should buy some and take some back with me. My mom says that yes, you can take them on the plane. So we will test that tomorrow. But 
Figured I'd bring some of these because that's a delicacy we haven't had in a long time. Treat yourself. And I got some positive energy tea for all the haters out there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it just looked good. Sweet tangerine tea. Haven't had that before. Figured it'd be kind of yummy. Just wanted to bring home some things that are like novel for my mom and me. And then because I know I would regret not buying food because I'm about to chill out and watch some movies and stuff in the hotel room, see if any odd haunting stuff happens. But I got a little vegetarian burrito because I ate too much meat yesterday. <laughs> some of you might be saying, what the heck, you're a loser. You didn't go out and take advantage of the night of the day and go drinking. But at the end of the day, I saved money for one. For two, I got some pretty awesome things, including a gift for my mom. She needs one of these so bad. She's gonna love this so much, I can't wait to give it to her. For now, I'm gonna have some kombucha. Some love kombucha because it's exactly what I can't find here in Alaska. I can't find romance and love here in Alaska, so I might as well drink it in kombucha form. Oh, so good, I love lavender. Anyway, so if you're at home, and you're like, oh, I should be out and about, going out all the time. Y'all know me for adventuring, but sometimes I just need to relax. Especially after adventuring all day. I'm not really feeling like socializing, if that makes sense. Juno is so beautiful. I'm also really enjoying just sitting up here. Like, I'm in my like high horse tower. My high tower, just watching all the people walk and do strange things down there. Yeah. I like to people watch, it's kind of fun. All right, I'm headed home. This was a fun time in Juneau. Not the last time we'll be in Juneau because uh, Juneau is the main city in Southeast Alaska in this region. So we will be back hopefully next time with my mom because I think she would really like visiting here. I don't know if I necessarily would want to live here. This is like, for me, this, this is just too many people. I'm not, I'm not a city girl anymore. I'm more of a um, bush woman. An Alaskan bushwoman. I like being out in the middle of nature. So it's just, you know, it's nice to visit every once in a while. I'm happy I was able to give Juno a try and check it out for the first time. And thanks Juno for having me and I will see you in the next video everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye ghosts. May you rest in peace. I will see you maybe another time. how beautiful these door handles are like so old and so cool old-timey walkie-walk things I love this kind of stuff